A very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us for another look at the headlines this morning. What are the papers saying? Well, we are on the right platform to get an insight to beyond the headlines, so to speak. My name is Felicity Ezeweke, and I'm joined by two very uh, special ladies. Aisha Yusufu, she's the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls group. We call that group BBOG. Thank you for joining us, Aisha. Thank you for having me. We also have Ifi Oji. Uh, she is a policy analyst. Thank you very much, um, Ifi, for joining us. Okay, um, we will get connected with Ifi in a bit. But let's start with the Punch newspaper. Um, APC factions continue battle as court affirms Gaidam party chair. Uh, it has two riders. NWC consults South South stakeholders for deputy secretary's replacement. Uh, Jimobi's men inaugurate Uzodimma committee appeal panel on Edo Paul. Uh, that's it. Uh, quite large on your screen now. At the top of the masthead, local flights can't resume on June 21, says uh, FG. Uh, COVID-19 cases hit record 745. PTF fears rain will boost infections. Family as well debunks Ajumobi's debt rumor. Daughter-in-law declares all will die. Okay, that's a, a strong one. Uh, family debunks Ajumobi's debt rumor. Daughter-in-law declares all will die. Uh, you find details of that on page 8. Uh, Amid's darkness, discos reject 8,244 megawatts in one week. Um, and then there's the situation of flood on the front page of the paper. Uh, we know that um, it wasn't a very good uh, yesterday for a lot of Lagosians. Uh, we have here four-year-old girls swept away. Woman dies. Buildings collapse as two-day rain pounds Lagos. Uh, the, the picture speaks um, uh, for itself. All right, let's uh, get the conversation started. There are other headlines there, but let's just get um, Aisha Yusuf on. Okay, I understand we also have Ifi Oji join us. Uh, she's a policy analyst. Thank you both for joining us for a review this morning. Okay, Aisha, let's start with you. Uh, the big one on the front page, um, APC faction continue battle as Scott of Firms gave them as uh, party chair. What's your take on all that display now? Uh, well, for me... Uh my take is basically what my take has always been. Uh, we've said red cards to APC and PDP. They are one and the same party. And so we have selfish politicians in Nigeria. We don't have uh, people, politicians who care about the nation, who have ideology, who are thinking of what they can do to better the lives of the people. All they're thinking about, it's, it's all about their selfish interest. And I think what is playing out in a do state right now uh, uh, says everything about that uh, selfish interests that come first for them rather than nation building. And for me, I think it is time for Nigerians to wake up to the fact that the, the political parties we have right now, they aren't the, the way political parties should be. And it's most important for Nigerians to begin to think of what is the way forward? Because at the end of the day, we need to fix quality for us to be able to get good governance in our country. Uh, let's look at the situation with uh, Jimobi, um uh, we, we had his um, aide uh, speak to us uh, earlier on the news, debunking all the rumors yesterday. But I also saw some, that story on some uh, platform just before bed last night. What's your take on this, you, some say, rumor mongering that is becoming to, uh, beginning to look like the normal news now because of uh, social media? Uh, well, I, I, for me, I don't think it's all about so it's because of social media. I mean, a rumor mongering has always been part of our lives, even before social media. Uh, you know, prominent people, one time or the other, they are of the, always, there has always been rumors about their death, even before the you know, social media in the 80s and all of that. So we, it's something that happens. It's not so we, we shouldn't blame it on social media. Yes, social media ensures that it gets, uh, it gets faster, the news gets to people faster that not normally happens. But at the end of the day, we do wish him a, a good health and uh, 
we wish uh, that he recovers from this. Uh, illness affects everyone, and nobody is above being ill. And like you heard the words of his daughter, every one of us is going to die. So there's no need where you see certain people jubilating over somebody's uh, ill health or somebody's death. It doesn't make any sense. But I think uh, rumor Mongri has always uh, been part of us. But it's most important that when people carry news, they should ensure that they're carrying the facts, not just imagination. Fair enough. Um, Ify, let's come to you now with the flood situation experienced across Nigeria, not just Lagos, but it was a bit more prominent because a four-year-old girl uh, lost her life and a woman as well died. And then you see all these pictures and videos uh, depicting the very sad uh, situation with flooding. Uh, what's your reaction Uh, Felicity, I think it's uh, really, really heartbreaking, especially when uh, lives that are lost are needless. Um, we, I know earlier um, last year we spoke about the idea of FEMA and all the wonderful work they've done, you know, in trying to uh, give us uh, timely information about potential threats. And uh, I don't know what happened in this particular um, circumstance. I don't know if it's one of those things that is an act of uh, God of force majeure where things are not actually... Uh, we're not actually uh, aware of the situation before it happens. But I think just because of all the other activities um, surrounding us in Nigeria at the moment, I don't think, I think maybe the, the, the focus has shifted a little in terms of everybody's, um, everybody's uh, uh, main objectives. So I think we, we really need to go back to basics on this one and just make sure that the bottom line is that our lives are, are preserved and uh, we can move ahead from, on, from that particular point on us. I mean, the darkness, discos reject 8,244 megawatts in one week. Ify. Sorry, asking, Felicity, can I'm you asking, repeat I'm this? asking for your reaction to the uh, reports here on page 10 of the paper saying, amid darkness, discos reject 8,244 megawatts in one week. Uh, I mean, between the two of us, I mean, we know that there's a lot of politicking going on at the back end or the backdrop of uh, power supply in Nigeria. It's been going on for decades. Um, I, To be honest, I'm not really sure about the details of this particular instance, but I would imagine that it's a situation where they have had their hands, their hands tied because I don't think anybody would actually look at a gift horse in the mouth and turn it down. So there must be uh, more to that story. It's a question of what it's in, um, um, unfolding in the next couple of days. To know uh, more details. All right, uh, there is this one here. It says a Buhari Capet service chiefs on killings, rape, others. And then we also have WHO declares Nigeria polio free. Let's start with our polio free status, Aisha. Okay, can you, can you repeat that again? WHO? WHO declare Nigeria polio free. Oh. And then fantastic. we also. Okay, we also have a Buhari Capet service chiefs on killings, rape, others. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to start with the great and amazing news. Uh, for us to be declared a uh, polo uh, free uh, nation, it, it, it's quite an achievement. And, it, and kudos to all the people that have been on that and have not given up. And over the years, this has taken decades and decades and decades, especially with the distrust for the uh, for the vaccine. Uh, but at the same time, we should not rest. We should, uh, the, they should not look at it as a job has been done. We should, uh, the issue of vaccination should keep going on so that we don't, uh, we don't have any emergence from, uh, from anywhere. So it's, it's quite an amazing uh, news uh, for Nigeria. Then the other thing, of course, uh, with, uh, uh, with Major General, uh, uh, retired Major General Muhammadu Buhari, you know, I, I don't know. It's just it's just a joke. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but the nation is actually a joke with with with, the, with President Buhari as, as as president, so so to speak, in quote, the president in quote. Uh, where he the first thing is that he's the commander in chief. Is the leadership that he gives that the service chiefs are going to use. So if he's not given any leadership, and today what we have is the law of the lead, and what they call the law of the lead. They cannot go above the level of the president. So the president isn't given any direction, isn't given any leadership. He has refused to start them. Killings are all going. He, he has not cared. He's just there. 
I mean, the, the whole world is back to, uh, is, is, is facing COVID-19. Beyond COVID-19, we also have a pandemic in the person of the president and Nigeria is faced. And the, the incompetence of the president has killed more people than COVID-19 in Nigeria. All right, Ify, let's look at the uh, story about the special courts. It says FG plans special courts to try rape other cases. Um, do you hold out much hope that um, um, this will be of much impact in the agitation to end rape in Nigeria? I will hold up. My, I will hold out if the, um, the if there's an, an independence that is guaranteed on these special courts, because at the end of the day, he who pays the five pack calls it to you. So if you have, if, if I mean, somebody said it, I, I read somewhere there, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, in respect of all the, um, the pandemic, for lack of a better word, as Hadja has said, of all the, uh, the, the, the rise in femicide and the sexual uh, gender-based violence, uh, that rapists are in our homes. They are our fathers, they are brothers, they are even in our leadership as well. So. You cannot cut off your hand to spite your face. You know what? You can sorry, cut off your nose to spite your face. If you understand what the old, the old um, proverb says, so for for, for it to, to to work, there has to be an autonomy to those special courts, and the courts have to be able to serve the public at large. You know, and and that is what we are hoping for. If this is going to actually uh, have any hope of um, doing what is intended to do. Uh, the, the PTF is expressing fears captured with this headline. COVID-19 cases hit record 745. PTF fears rain will boost infections. What worries you the most about this um, um, expression by the PTF? Are you talking to me? Uh, yes, Ify, yes, yes, I'm still with you, yes. Okay, so again, I, I, I think my position on, on this particular matter, especially regarding the COVID pandemic, is, is very, very clear. We just need to follow the money, follow the, the desire for the money, follow, the, follow the, the, the demand for money, follow the supply of money, and then we, most of the answers, I, I end up, we end up seeing a, a, a particular picture being painted. So I'll give you for an example, though. So if you have a com an economy that's not necessarily doing as well as it can do, then, uh, then uh, there, there becomes an issue. Okay, we seem to have lost uh, Ify, so I'll go right straight up to um, Aisha. Uh, what's your take on the concerns being expressed about the weather and the increasing number? We have over 700 as of yesterday. Uh, I, I think uh, w when it comes to uh, COVID-19, I think, for, first of all, the, the fact that there's so much distrust in the nation makes it very difficult. Because you talk to the man on the street, the woman on the street, all they're thinking about is the fact that there's nothing like COVID-19. It's just the government trying to loot as much money as they can. And so that give, that becomes a huge problem where there is that mistrust. And this mistrust at the end of the day is going to lead to people not taking the necessary uh, precaution that they should people not doing the things that they ought to do. And you just see people just living recklessly. And at the end of the day, what is going to happen is the fact that there's going to be there's going to be increase. And one of the things is that, like I've always said, it seems as if Nigerians have, a, they think they have the patent to prayers. So Nigerians believe that when they pray, automatically God answers. So even the things that God has given us brains to do with, we don't do them. So with that in mind, a lot of Nigerians are more focused on praying and hoping that it is not their portion, it will not happen to them. And of course, unfortunately, if we go on with that attitude, we're going to have an uh, uh, increase. And so a whole lot needs to be done, even in educating the people and letting them understand that this is serious and this is real. Yeah, when you th even th tell there them is some indeed this a saying that... Um, they tell you uh, praying, uh, prayer without good words amounts to not much. So um, your mm -hmm. words are very cautious indeed. Uh, let's go to the Nation newspaper. APC Tussle, I never asked courts to declare Gaidam acting chair, says vice chair. Um, a, a couple of writers to that story, of course, um, explaining what's going on with the APC at the moment. Uh, Naira slumps to 385 Naira to a dollar at official market. And then we have Ajimobi is alive, says daughter-in-law. Uh, more headlines. 80% of infected persons not in centers. Domestic flights resumption to wait. Woman sets up friend for eight-man rape gang. I mean, reading that only makes me want to gag. Um, let's talk to Aisha. Just stick a pick. 
from these headlines? Ha! Huh. Rape, rape, rape. Oh. I, it, it's, just, it's just sad. It's just sad where we are. And you know, what is the most saddest thing is the fact that those things have been happening in our nation. We go into a frenzy and over, after a while, everything just goes off and then we wait for the next frenzy to happen. We've got into a place where rape is seen as, as a weapon, as a weapon of subjugation, as a weapon to oppress people. And unfortunately, even a female uh, take part in it. I thought that, I read the other day in the news where a step, uh, that, was, that wasn't in Nigeria, but a step, a, step, a, a mother uh, hired people to rape her daughter who had, who had outed her stepfather, that's the mother's husband, that was sexually abusing her. So you begin to imagine what's going on in the world. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And it's the time for us all to begin to take rape for the heinous crime that it is. And not just there's something that we can just uh, uh, brush away and, and, do, and do nothing about it. All right, we'll move on to the Nigerian Tribune newspaper now. Uh, court renews Gaidom's claim to APC chairmanship. That's uh, still on the APC issue. Uh, worsening insecurity, your best not good enough, Buhari tells security chief. Uh, Jimobi not dead, family aid says. COVID-19, Nigerians more at risk of infections now. PTF, no plan to dismantle discos. Uh, those are some headlines for you um, on the Nigerian Tribune. We move straight up now to this day newspaper because we've touched on almost all the headlines um, on the Tribune. Um, the big one here is Buhari reprimands security chiefs, says no more excuses for insecurity. Um, Aisha has also spoken on that a bit. Let's see. Um, CBN to create non-interest window for intervention funds. PDP shifts a governorship primary for Obaseki. Edo Gov to formally join opposition today, says party. Court renews order for Gaidam to act as APC chair. Let's, let's, let's take that one on. Uh, the, the complaint, as it were, with the PDP moving its primaries. Uh, this paper is putting it bluntly that it is to accommodate Obaseki. Do you agree? Yeah, of course. And, and, and it's a smart move on the part of PDP, of course. They, as much as possible, they want to win the election. And having a sitting governor uh, be um, in your party, that, that's everything. And so it, it's, a short, it's a shorter form. And let me, like I said earlier, those political parties, all they're interested in, and the politicians, all they're interested in, is just to win power for their own selfish interests. So it doesn't matter. And for me, I just hope the Edo people, I mean, Edo people, we are said to be the heartbeat of the nation. I, I, I like, let me just go and be, you know, I'm an Edo girl, and this thing they pay me like anything. They talk to me, you know, they carry love. If Edo people really are the heartbeat of the nation and they want to earn everything, they should shun both APC and PDP and look for another credible candidate and vote for that person. Because we have seen that these two parties don't care. They are one and the same. They do the same thing. They care for their selfish interests. And so the people should rise up for once and determine who becomes the president, not just on a bunch of selfish people doing that. Apart from that, let me just go touch a little bit on the disco, on the issue of the disco. Here, I don't have the facts as much as I should, but I think at the end of the day, we should look at this based on business. If it is not favorable for you to collect certain electricity, we look, we look at these discos. They are also business entities, and they're there, and they're supposed to make money. And if it's not favorable for them, definitely they will reject some of this electricity. Okay, this quick one that I missed. Malami rights president, six removal of Magu. That's um, another one at the top of the uh, masthead of this day newspaper. It has a rider, accuses EFCC boss of diversion of recovered loot, insubordination, says Magu reckless liability to anti-corruption war. Uh, this conversation seems on ending what is going on what's your perception um of this uh, situation what, what, what is going on obviously it's just lack of leadership on every ground everywhere there's always almost like crisis ESPC is fighting dss okay. uh, uh nigeria i mean nigerian police they are having their own tours almost all over the country you know Things are just unraveling. Things are just all over the place. Basically, that's happening. But the most important thing is that whatever allegations that there are, there, are, there should be investigation. And of course, if they're found to be true, then the right thing should be done. 
But we see, of course, a president who refuses to, to sack people, even when they have been found to want to repeat it. And so it's unfortunate where all of this will lead to. It ends up that people are talking, and then at the end of the day, nothing is being done, and the nation is, and the nation is being affected on all grounds. And it, it's something we, we just need to look at from the top. We have a fair leader, and everything is cascading. But from, right. you talked about the family, the other time shooting at Bila, things are just going wrong. We need, as all right, nation, we need to... Aisha, well, I'm sorry I had to interject. I understand we have EC back on the line, so we'll just give her a short bit of talk time uh, to look at some of the headlines on Business Day. If he, uh, glad to have you back. How Edo sustains learning? despite school closing and then we also have um, develop development financing offers part to metering all electricity consumers uh, that's another one on the business day development financing offers part to metering all electricity consumers and then inside the paper you have Nimasa targets 1 billion naira monthly revenue from operating a floating dockyard um which of these would you want to take on quickly if he um let's just look at the uh, hi hi Felicity. i'm just going to look at the um the uh, development financing offers part to metering electricity consumer i don't have the actual data but i know for a fact that metering and and uh, lost revenues from metering and, and and collect them um, tariffs that are not collected from a, a, a substantial part of what what is not working right now within the power um, sector landscape um i, I development financing is obviously needed i think that the idea of their looking outside and not, not necessarily within uh, the nigerian uh, market is actually a good thing because i know that there are biases towards specific kind of uh, power that is powered by uh, energy that's powered strictly by uh, fossil fuels. And having a hybrid, and which is what I think development finance will typically bring, will, will, actually, look, will actually resolve that problem and um, possibly even make sure even uh, uh, power is um, um, given more efficiently. And another thing, another thing to also uh, take into consideration is the idea that um, um, with that comes a level of uh, monitoring and uh, evaluation that is sometimes missing in, in, in some of these discussions. So I think that this is necessary. This is actually a good thing for Nigeria in the long term. All right, Ify, um, at least you were able to get back to us in spite of the network. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your time on the newspaper review. Thank you. Thank you, Felicity. Thank you, Haji. As well, Aisha Yusufu, a pleasure to have you on our newspaper review. I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And that's how we wrap things up this morning. I hope you got some insight. Please don't forget, go patronize your vendor or go online, read details. Make sure you have the details. Don't just run with the headlines, just as our analysts help us make sense of them. Go make sense of them as well yourself. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Thank you, as always, for your time.